from a hot summer day yesterday to a frosty winter night here before summer returns again next week uh, but it is now it is Thursday October 24th 2024 guys and uh so you know just doing my daily doom scrolling and uh and hopium slogging in the usual here at the end of this this busy day and uh, <coughs> it seems like you know what do we got going in cop 16 this week and cop 29 coming up you know everywhere you look there's another cop uh, staring us in the face so uh, <coughs> just wading through all of these bullshit ain't gonna happen stories on uh, COP 16 and COP 29 uh, and it's just like everything I read now is, is this ain't gonna happen shit so uh, I was thinking so this story which how many, <coughs> how many alert readers have sent me this? Uh, I know uh, Elliot's the latest one to send me this story from the Guardian. So I was just going to put this story, probably lead off my ain't going to happen roundup tomorrow night with this story. But with with uh, since I have so many other uh, uh, of these COP 16 and 29 stories tomorrow night. I, I guess this story from the good old Guardian, I guess it deserves its own standalone rant. Uh, <clears throat> this is from the Guardian's environmental reporter, Jonathan Watts. And Jonathan is asking the question, and, and uh, guys, before I start this, <clears throat> This is all about the H word. And if I spent 90 seconds every time the H word came up, it would take 30 minutes just to go through as many times as, as Jonathan uh, uses the H word. So I'm going to have to put the H word on hiatus. And uh, as hard as that's going to be for me. But I love it when they ask a question in a headline. Here is the question of the day. Would abandoning... Would abandoning... All right. See, you understand why I can't do this. Would abandoning hope help us to tackle the climate crisis? The answer to the question... Would abandoning hope help us to tackle the climate crisis? Is no, it would not. It, it makes absolutely zero difference whether you are a human in 2024 like me who has abandoned all hope about anything to do uh, with the state of this planet. Uh, you can go from my end of the spectrum to, uh, y y you know, the usual cast of suspects. Huh. Hope has nothing to do with it on any, on any level. You can have as much or as little hope as you want to have, and it won't make one fucking shred of difference on your ability or anyone else to, what was the word, tackle, tackle uh, the climate crisis. So the answer to the question is no. Uh, but anyway, uh, that would be a pretty short rant. So let's dive in <clears throat> to the question of the day. 
from the Guardian. If despair is the most unforgivable sin, then hope is surely the most abused virtue. That observation feels particularly appropriate as we enter the COP season, that time of United, Nates, United Nations mega conferences at the end of every year when national leaders feel obliged to convince us that the future will be better despite growing evidence to the contrary. Climate instability, you know, COP29, and nature extinction, you know, COP26, are making the Earth an uglier, riskier, and more uncertain place. Desiccating water supplies, driving up the price of food, displacing humans and non-humans, battering cities and ecosystems with fiercer storms, floods, heat waves, droughts, and forest fires. Still worse could be in store, could be in store. Much worse will be in store as we approach or pass a series of dangerous tipping points for Amazon rainforest dieback, ocean circulation breakdown, ice cap collapse, and other unimaginably horrible but ever more possible catastrophes. Yet, apparently, we must still have, have, have. we must still have, 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 we must still have, 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 have. It is mandatory. Yes, it is mandatory. Change is impossible we are told, without positive thinking and belief in a better future. Well, I am telling you that change is impossible, okay, with or without positive thinking or negative thinking uh, or whatever your belief in a better future is, is completely irrelevant. Believe, believe in the fucking Tooth Fairy, Santa Claus, and the Easter Bunny. It makes no difference to the fact we are fucked. Okay? That, that, the we must still have, <coughs> is the message of just about every politician and business leader I have interviewed in close to two decades on the environment beat. And we will hear it again at the UN Biodiversity COP16 in Colombia, which kicked off this week, then again at the Climate COP29 in uh, as uh, however you pronounce uh, as or in a few weeks time if past international confabs are any guide there is little uh, well little there is no prospect of concrete action in the here and now but there will be ever more ambitious plans for the distant future, roadmaps, commitments, targets, reasons to have. And of course, we will hear it most loudly in the U.S. presidential election, which is always about which candidate is most faithful to the American dream of endless expansion. At least we don't have to look at that goddamn H word like we uh, did, you know, with Barack Obama. But, but what 
if it is hope that is the problem. What if hope is the problem? I, I don't know why did he word the sentence, but what if it is hope that is the problem? What's wrong with making the sentence, what if hope is the problem? What if hope is the antidepressant that has been keeping us all comfortably numb when we have every right to be sad, worried, stirred to action, stirred to action, or just plain angry. You know, I really wish that Jonathan Watts, as I just uh, was talking to Elliot about, I really wish that Jonathan Watts had explained what the fuck stirred to action. It's supposed what, what the hell is stirred to action supposed to mean? Okay, so you abandon all hope, uh, you flush the hopium down the toilet, uh, you pull your head out of your ass, you understand how fucked we are, you abandon all hope of, of anything ever getting better, and maybe that can help stir you to action. This word action is in many ways getting more irritating to me uh, than the word put hub in one hand and hub actions in the other hand and see which one fills up first. Okay, stirring you to action. Come on. Uh, God. No explanation of what that's supposed to mean. All right, these are not questions most of us want to ask, me included. Though most people who read environmental coverage assume the opposite because the trends we report on are relentlessly grim, some of my guardian colleagues joke that my job is to make everyone feel miserable. <clears throat> who wants to do that? But I uh, often do wake up filled with dread, and while exhortations to lift my spirits or look at things in a more positive light, look at things in a more positive light, are no doubt well intend intended. It does make me bristle a little bit. Isn't it healthy to be concerned as long as it is not debilitating? Isn't it part of a process toward seeking change. There we go. You can put that, the word change right up there with hope and action. <clears throat> New research reveals that people who are experiencing climate-related distress are more likely to engage in collective action. There you go. Uh, new research on, okay. More like, I guess I'll have to go on to his link about the new research. Maybe I can get a definition uh, 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 of what this dude, uh, his definition of collect, collective action. History, by contrast, shows that manufactured optimism can lead to complacency and the shirking of responsibilities. In the 1990s, <laughs> coupled with doubt, you, you take a big dash of hope, a big dash of doubt, was the fossil fuel industry's antidote 
to the pro precautionary principle, the sensible idea that some problems had such dire implications that humanity should err on the side of caution even if the science was not completely settled. And, and guys, I have no idea where the, the, this, what, 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 what this dude was smoking to come up with this next sentence. I'm assuming he was having this fantasy about Daddy Bush, not Baby Bush. When George W. Bush was president, he was initially so concerned by the impact of fossil fuels on the climate that he looked into regulating the oil industry. I, 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 I have no idea where that fantasy came from. He puts no link uh, to that where he came up with that ridiculous idea that the oil man, Daddy Bush, uh, was initially so concerned by the impact of fossil fuel on the climate that he looked into regulating the oil industry. He was the oil industry. Uh, I I I anyway, moving on. But he backed away from this on the grounds that future generations would probably develop new technologies to solve the problem. Call that dumb, call that wishful thinking, or call that huh, huh, or call that huh, huh. The result was the same. No action. Yes. That, once again, looks to be the temptation of Britain's... I, I'm, I'm not going to get get into British politics, I know. You know, the Guardian is... I, 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 anyway, uh, who cares about that washed up old empire? Uh, anyway, so we're going to skip uh, down. Okay. There are more, more constructive, less manipulative types of hope, of course. <laughs> How about this? Hope based on common sense and solid science. There, 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 there you go. Uh, it, it, it is common sense and solid science are the two main reasons I have no ho uh, Anybody with one ounce of common sense who is uh, who cares to spend oh five minutes a day reading the solid science would abandon all hope. There is no hope based on common sense and solid science. I have no fucking idea what the dude is talking about any more than that shit about uh, Daddy Bush being concerned about climate change or all of this shit about being stirred to action. Anyway, so what are some other types of hope? Oh, of course, hope based on actions taken today rather than promised in the distant future. There you go. How about hope based on keeping our home planet habitable rather than colonizing Mars or waiting for rewards in the afterlife. Well, once again, I don't know where the dude is coming from. Uh, we have as much chance of colonizing Mars as we do uh, keeping this planet habitable. There, there's six of one, half dozen of the other. Make, make, makes no, make, makes no difference whether humans head to Mars or not. Uh, this is hope. What is hope that generates change? Uh, I love this one. 
some of the most effective climate action advocates, such as Christi, Christine Figueres and Catherine Hayhoe, are impressively effective advocates of such positive thinking. Yes, uh, <laughs> anyway, if you don't know who he's talking about, I don't have uh, two hours to explain it to you. And yes, there are good news stories, uh-huh, even on the environment beat. How about the extraordinary expansion of renewable energy? Yes, has exceeded even the most optimistic forecast. Parentheses, though a huge share of the extra supply has been taken up by the extra demand of artificial intelligence cryptocurrencies, and social media. And, and, and of course, the uh, entire renewable energy uh, transition is one of the biggest hoaxes and scams uh, ever rammed down our throats, but I think I went over that last night. Uh, where were we? Uh, again, I have no idea what hopium pipe this dude is smoking. Carbon emissions might actually fall this year. Though analysts have been saying that for years, and if and when that does happen, the reductions will certainly be too shallow to prevent global heating from passing one and a half C, probably two C, and entirely possibly three C or four C. And don't forget the uh, one of the greatest ingredients of the hopium pipe that the human population may peak mid-century. Yes which would give other species more breathing space as long as they are not already extinct by then. <laughs> I'm sure he had some fun with the editor on this piece. At The Guardian, we try to present solutions Mm, as well as problems. I, I, again, you know, you know, the Guardian. While uh, it it does a little bit better than, than you know the hardcore mainstream media, there is no way the fucking Guardian is ever going to say this is not a problem. Uh, this is a predicament, and they sure as shit. Uh, the Guardian is never going to say there are no solutions, only outcomes, which otherwise meaning the collapse of everything. This is a, not a problem with a solution. This is a predicament with an outcome of the collapse of everything which you're never going to read in the goddamn uh, Guardian or anywhere. It, it, it ain't going to happen. But, you, you know, I mean, outside of the, the doomosphere, of course. At the Guardian, we try to present solutions as well as problems. Yes, but there needs to be a balance that reflects reality. After the recent New York Climate Week, the journalist Amy Westervelt wrote of the zombie-like repetition of, we have to stay positive, tell the positive stories, and give people have of it. Give people have of it. I think we should charge people for, for, for uh, uh, I think you'd have to pay out the nose for it. Don't give them hope. Uh, make them buy it. <clears throat> and give people have of it. 
even as the reality of the moment was the devastation of Hurricane Helene, deadly landslides in Nepal, the sentencing of a UK climate activist to prison, and news that fossil fuel companies are expanding production. As she put it, don't get me wrong, there are good news stories, and I know how important it is to share and savor them, but the, this focus on positivity to the exclusion of anything else felt completely surreal and, if I'm being honest, a little scary, close quote. <laughs> Hope is at best a motivating belief, a tool, a commodity, it should never be rammed down other people's throats, you know, making them choke on hope. You should never force people to choke on hope by ramming it down their throats, or especially those who are suffering the consequences of the wish fulfillment of wealthier, faraway consumers. And then a kind of a rough segue here. In the Amazon rainforest right now, the political mood music and government policies are much better under President Lula than they were under Bozo Nero, yet the situation on the ground is becoming worse. Ever longer dry seasons have left some of the world's biggest rivers at horrendously low levels, and there have been more fires this year than at any time in two decades. You know, a, a lot more fires uh, under Lula than under Bozo Nero. It is sadly not enough for this government, that for this government, meaning Lula, to be better than the last, it needs help from the rest of the world. That is clear from the big trends. South America is becoming hotter, drier, and more flammable. Fires are turning forests into carbon emitters rather than carbon sinks. Up to half of the Amazon could hit a tipping point by 2050 as a result of water stress, land clearance, and climate disruption. Forest dwellers are having to cope with a daily reality that increasingly resembles an apocalypse. Promises of help are predicated on ever more business as usual. Not surprisingly, many feel they are victims of a confidence trick. <clears throat> Al Alton Krenak, a Brazilian indigenous intellectual, there are no uh, Brazilian indigenous intellectuals because there are no Bra Brazilian indigenous people, intellectual or not, anyway, said, Original peoples, original peoples had learned to be dis, distrustful of hopes based on economic development. Quote, when I denounce this kind of end of the world, I'm not renouncing hope, but I also don't want to promote a placebo hope. One where you put someone, where you pat someone on the shoulder and say, everything will be fine. It won't be fine. We are going to get worse for a while, but after that, we can improve as long as we learn to renounce he observed in a recent interview with Manga Bay, I think I was reading from that in another rant just recently. Uh, 
this suspicion has deep roots, and not just in Brazil. Her hope was weaponized by Christian missionaries promising a better afterlife than by colonizers offering access to a supposedly superior civilization than by the capitalist market where a lure of wealth and creature comforts in exchange for land and nature. Uh, anyway, they, he goes on and on with the uh, noble uh, savage stuff. He, he goes off on a noble uh, savage ramp for most of the remainder of the article. Uh, okay, but let's wind it up. He finishes up with the noble savages uh, not buying the hopium uh, as uh, much as the people selling it. And wraps up, if you are not alarmed at what is happening to the forest, the oceans, the ice caps, the cities, the farms, and supermarkets, then you are not paying enough attention. That may be due to fear, doubt, or ignorance, or perhaps you are enveloped in that insidious, complacent, long-term form of her, form of her, that has been diverting our gaze, giving us pause, slowing action, yes, and normalizing the degradation of our home planet. Essentially, this can be boiled down to the fact that we are leaving our problems for our children. Well, well, I'm not leaving a damn one of my problems for my ch children because I don't have any goddamn kids. Which is the one thing that gives me hope. Yes. We are leaving our problems to our children. Where is the huh? Where is the hope in that? Anyway, uh, I will give Jonathan Watts, let's give him about three stars uh, on, on the on the hopium meter. Uh, I, I still want Jonathan Watts to come back and explain to me all, all about these actions, about stirring ourselves to action. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Jonathan. Uh, it sounds like you're telling me to go buy an electric car. Uh, you're sounding a little bit like a clueless moron, Jonathan. But compared to some of these uh, hopium peddlers. Anyway, I've got to wrap this up because I really want to get back to this new Netflix documentary on the Zodiac Killer. It, it, it cut, cut and dried uh, that they knew exactly uh, who, who the Zodiac Killer was. And, and if they did not know who it was, uh, th 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 this is just one more instance of an absolute failure uh, by, uh, by the cops uh, that uh, they, they, they couldn't catch this dude. Uh, anyway, if, if you do have any interest in who the Zodiac Killer was, uh, once you get tired of all the doom scrolling and you want to get some distraction on serial killers, uh, check out the new Netflix documentary on the Zodiac Killer so you can answer that question at least. All right, little dog, i got to get back to Netflix while I still can. Bye, guys.